What's up guys, today we're going to take a quick look at connecting and uploading files to your Raspberry Pi with SSH and FTP. That way you can use the Pi without a mouse or keyboard connected. We're going to start completely from scratch, so I'll leave some timestamps below so you can skip ahead to the step that you need. Let's hop right into it. We're going to start with a completely fresh installation of the Raspberry Pi OS. So go ahead and download that, and then use Etcher to flash it onto your SD card. Etcher dismounts the SD card, but we're gonna make a small change to it, so take it out and plug it back into your computer. By default, SSH is disabled on a clean install, so we'll enable it by opening up the drive and creating a file called SSH in the root directory. So just create a new text document, mark it all, and then just write SSH. It will ask you if you want to change the file name extension, and you want to just hit yes. With that done, you can dismount the, uh, the SD card from your computer and plug it into your Raspberry Pi. A different way of enabling SSH if you aren't running your Pi headless is by opening up a terminal and running sudo raspi config. Here you can enable it under the interface options. So interfacing options, SSH, and then just hit yes. So after enabling SSH, we need the IP address of the Pi to connect to it. We'll need this for both SSH and for transferring files with FTP. So while we're here, you can grab the IP address of your Pi using hostname dash i. That's the local address of your, of your Pi. In case you're running it headless, I'll show you three more options for finding the IP address. So the first and easiest way is to use your router list. A lot of routers have an interface to show the connected devices on your local network. In case yours do, you can head over to your router's interface by opening a, a web browser and heading to the IP of your router. The most standard IP is this one, 192.168.1.1. And in my case, I've logged in and you can see the Raspberry Pi is listed here. This is the IP address of the Pi and you can see the name of it. Another easy way of doing it is simply by opening up a command prompt and then just trying to ping Raspberry Pi. As you can see, it shows us the IP address because this is the, uh, the name of the Raspberry Pi. It's broadcasting that to the local network. So you can actually just use SSH Pi, which is the username of my Pi, then add and Raspberry Pi and it will connect just fine. You just need the password and boom, you're connected. So those were the first two. The last one is probably the most uh, difficult, but it's still pretty easy. So for the last method here, you want to download a tool called Nmap. It's a network diagnostics tool, which you can use to scan your local network basically. So when you open it up here in command, you simply type Nmap slash SN, then your local network here. So in, in my case, I know that the Pi will be on something between zero and 255 here, which means I'm just gonna type slash 24. It will search the entire subnet and it will output a list of the different uh, local uh, devices connected. So after it's done, you can see here, Raspberry Pi trading, and it shows us the IP address here too. To upload files, we'll need an FTP client. There's a lot of different ones available. I like to use the one called FileZilla. So I'll open that up and we'll connect to the Pi. So here in hostname, you want to type SFTP, which stands for Secure File Transfer Protocol. Then you want to type a colon, slash, slash, and then the IP of your Raspberry Pi. So in my case, it was 1.76. Then you want to type the username of the Pi which in my case is pi, and then the password. The port that it uses for default is uh, is 22, which is the same it uses for SSH. But if we leave that empty and just type, and just try connecting, it will just input it automatically. And it will say, it just said, okay. And now we connected to the pi, and we can simply say drag and drop files into here. And you can simply navigate FileZilla by using this little thing here, 
or you can just take something from your desktop and just drag it into FileZilla right here. So that's it for this time. Be sure to leave a like if you learned something, subscribe for more tutorials, and go create something cool.